everyone. My name is Aisha Omishari, and today I'm going to talk to you about the history of Travelers Insurance Company. They started out in 1853 as St. Paul Fire and Marine Insurance Company, after, uh, and it was started by Alexander Wilkin and 16 other St. Paul businessmen. In 1864, that was the official start of the Travelers Insurance Company under the Travelers name. Uh, throughout the 1900s it, uh, and 1990s, it went through a series of mergers and acquisitions. Most of the famous uh, acquisitions and mergers were by Primerica in 1993 and Athena and um, Citigroup. After that, in 2004, it renamed itself as St. Paul's Travelers, and in 2007, the company had consolidated under the Travelers name. It is important to note that throughout those mergers and acquisitions, Travelers has fought to keep its name and famous red umbrella logo throughout. And now I'm going to talk to you guys about the current status of the company. It is currently ranked number 99 in the Fortune 500 list. It is considered the second largest American insurance company in terms of um, market value and the second largest writer of commercial U.S. property and casualty insurance. As for the market served, it, it operates domestically throughout all 50 U.S. states and internationally through the U.K., Shanghai, Singapore, and Canada. As for the products offered, it is divided into three segments, personal insurance, business insurance, financial insurance, and international insurance. For personal insurance, it has <coughs> auto insurance, home ID theft, wedding insurance, boat and yacht insurance, along with several other types of insurance, including those dealing with hurricanes and floods. As for the business insurance, it serves small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and large businesses, along with specialized industries. Uh, it operates through ho hotel insurance, and buildings, restaurants, stores, and other several types of insurance. As for the financial, professional, and international insurance, it currently offers bond and financial products and contract insurance. All right, my name is Gene Razim, and I'll be talking to you about the, the financial um, status of um, the Travis Company. As of now, Travelers is the largest finance um, insurance company in America. It has over $105 billion in assets. And more importantly, it is ranked also the number 99th uh, company in the world, which is really huge on the Fortune 500 list. Um, a lot of the things that I've, that I've contributed to the success of Travelers include um, Travelers' ability to react to change. What that means is... Um, for instance, they merged a lot of times with a lot of companies. One of the instances was with um, Citigroup, where the merger didn't work out quite, quite as they hoped, so they um, parted from it, and now they're better for doing that. And also, um, and also, they went from being a mutual company to a stock company, where they could raise a lot more money versus being a mutual company. Travelers has also grown by merging and you know splitting when the mergers don't work throughout the years. For the year 2008, Travelers had over 20, set about $24.7 billion in revenue and $2.9 billion in net income. Their RRE is over 22 times that of the industry, and their RRE is over 30 times that of the industry. Their stock price is pretty stable. It's been about $46 high over the past five years and 36 low. And um, Travelers is very financially efficient. The revenue per employee is about $726,000. And um, Travelers has grown by over 10% over the past five years. Areas of concern for Travelers include their debt to equity ratio, which is 1.5 times that of the industry. So they need to lower that to um, bring that down so they can attract more investors. In addition, um, the sales have declined by 8% over this year. And also, um, industry leader Berkshire Hathaway, uh, their revenue is five times that of Travelers, which is a fairly large company. For the future, we can see Travelers do a lot of um, catching up with the industry leader. 
And also we can expect to see a lot of mergers and acquisitions on this part because that's the, that's the way to grow. Um, it'll probably be acquiring brands that are more popular than, than it is right now. And also they'll be focusing on trimming their, uh, their, their, their debt and increasing the, um, the equity that they, they, they can gain from um, stock ownership. And also they'll continue to innovate. Um, travelers, uh, they introduced the first airline travel insurance and also they introduced the first space travel insurance. Uh, they, you can look forward to travelers bringing out a lot more new products and continue to be um, generate more revenue while being more financially efficient by um, generating funds through um, through stock shares instead of um, instead of you know loans or borrowing. Good afternoon. My name is Ricardo Perez. I'm going to be talking about travelers insurance and the uh, forces forces which are. Act uh, currently acting upon uh, th this industry. Uh, typically, force, typical forces are increased competition, not just from national uh, companies, which are uh, in increasingly a threat, but also from multinationals, which are uh, merging and acquiring other companies in other, in, in, within the United States in order to gain a larger market share. Uh, there's also additional financial pressures, which are uh, uh, struggling uh, facing other companies within this industry uh, to the recent stock market declines and financial troubles, especially in the commercial paper sectors of the, of the market. There's also increased regulatory oversight uh, by the states, which regulate each individual insurer that operates within these borders. Uh, there's also the risk of uh, large reinsurers having problems or inability, as a matter of fact, to pay their uh, insurers uh, promptly. Um, often this leads to legal action and increased legal costs which are also unexpected for insurances like uh, travelers. There's also industry contractions uh, which are due to insolvencies and bankruptcies in recent months uh, which are unfortunately expected to change the dynamics of the market with the foreseeable future. There's the added cost of uh, new terrorist policies which uh, insurers also must make available now due to the September 11 attacks. Uh, which are uh, most, of, most for the most part uh, guaranteed by the uh, government to receive payment, but they have a cap of 100 billion. Anything beyond that, insurance must pay. Uh, 